Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing. And I'm not just saying that, I truly mean I hope you have an amazing day today. I'm gonna to start the day with a pretty insane clutch of ball pythons. This was actually a Cine Walma bred to a banana and cheap pinstripe. And oh my goodness, when these guys crawled out of the egg, I opened them up this morning and I was like, holy cow, there are some rippers in here. I mean, some stuff is just, again, like a banana pinstripe is absolutely amazing. This is another little banana pinstripe looking really amazing. And then we start getting into the crazy stuff here. First, before we get into the really, really crazy stuff, there's this one right here, which is just a banana, it's a Woma, and it's a Cine. So the Cine Banana Woma makes that really purplish look, which I I think is absolutely amazing. But I tell you what, once we added the Enchi into these jeans, oh my gosh, these things just started going crazy. This here is that same snake, just like this. These two are basically the exact same snake. The only difference is, is the Enchi. So this one right here, that is an absolute stunner, is actually a banana, it's a Cine, it's an Enchi, and it's a Woma. I mean, look at the pattern on this thing and the color on this thing. That thing is ridiculous. That is definitely, I mean, I was blown away. I, I, I knew it was gonna be pretty, but when it hatched out, it was like, holy cow. And when it sheds, gets a little size to it, oh my goodness, is that thing gonna be crazy. And then weirdly enough, when you take the banana and add pinstripe, this is actually just a pinstripe, an enchi, and a cine. And that thing looks crazy cool. Look at the orange and the sides and stuff like that. Again, it doesn't have the banana gene in it, so but it looks absolutely ridiculous. I love the way that one turned out. And then finally, we did hit the all gene animal, which is of course the banana, the pinstripe, the woma, the enchi, and the cine. And to be honest with you, as we kind of reduce the pattern, some of the kind of coolness did go away from it a little bit, but it's still an absolute ripper. I mean, that thing is so absolutely beautiful. But look, just look at all of these amazing snakes in this clutch. I love that combo. It's something that I was thinking was going to be cool, but I honestly didn't expect it to be as wild and awesome as it is. And again, these guys haven't even shed. So when they shed out, again, get a few meals and really brighten up, two, three hundred grams. Oh my gosh, you're going to need sunglasses to look at a couple of these things, that's for sure. So uh, just a cool way to start the day with an awesome clutch of ball pythons that hatched out and one that kind of surprised me with the genetics with how beautiful they are. So hey, I'll tell you what, I like starting each and every day just like this. Glory. Don't, don't run away from me. What? I wanted to talk to you about something I'm pretty excited about. So, I have the USDA licensing for the sloth. So, I know that you said you were on board. No, I did not. I told you to do I your homework. I did my homework. Okay. I've got my homework here, and I've got the permits that are going to go out. And once we get the permits and we do all our homework, you're going to be on board with no, the sloth. No, that's not what I said at all. I said, yeah, I do your homework you, right. first and show it to me, right. and then we can talk about it. But we're, pretty, no... but we're pretty set that we're good. No, we are not. I know you are. I am not. <laughs> it's going to be okay, Laurie. Seriously. I'm going to send no. these off, and then we'll get this thing, and then we'll start looking well, for the sloth. Well, number one, but... I don't have to worry about it, because you've never sent anything paperwork off in or your the life. Good, well, the good news so... is, is that I've got uh, Steph is going to help me with it. Yeah, so. I know she is not going to do that yeah, without so, checking. So I, but I wanted to know... Let's say once we get the sloth, like, it, I'm just, you know, you know I, I dream animals for me, right? I just want to talk about dream animals. If, and this is a big if, I mean, like, if we could get a Komodo dragon legally, oh, would you? Would that you, is a huge jump. So now you're going from freaking sloth to a Komodo dragon. But it is reptarium. You said that the sloth wasn't the reptile thing. So, I mean, would you consider letting me get a Komodo dragon? If I could get legally, you know, I don't know if I can get one legally. It's, I'm going to look into it real hard, but I'm just wondering if that's a possibility. If I, if I only need, if. I, I need my medical marijuana card, like right now. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> that's where you're driving right. me. <laughs> so, Komodo's okay then. No. Why isn't Komodo okay? It's just like Elvis, but bigger. And deadly. Deadly. When, when, did, who, when has anyone ever died from a Komodo attack? I don't know, because you're not allowed to have them. No, but zoos have them, and no one ever died. That's that's silly. I bet. I bet. I'm gonna Google. Where's my phone? No, no. How no, many people can't. have died? From no a one's ever died from a Komodo mm, ever. I'm pretty sure people have. So sloth is up first, Komodo second. And then, I don't know if you'll go for this one, but the next one may be King Cobra. I really you know like what? the King Cobra. All right. I'm about two seconds from throwing this in your face. <laughs> So okay, so we'll stop one, with the Komodo. Okay, so we're two, good with the sloth and the Komodo then. I'll just stop no, there. Okay, thank you. All right. All right. <laughs> 
And what the heck, well, as I'm getting my dream animal sloth, or hopefully getting my dream animal sloth, I'd like to know down in the comments. Let's have some fun. Let me know what your dream animal is. Comment down below. Let me know if you could get any animal you want, what would it be? Uh, I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say. What are you doing, bro? Just on peel. Throwing this darn table away. I don't like this thing. I'm looking for like a card table or something. No, just taking this apart so we can paint the room, you know? Don't want to paint the room and get my uh, beautiful new table all messed up. So we're going to have to take it apart, get the table out of here, secure it to where it uh, doesn't get messed up, and then start painting. last time of spraying the ceiling and literally getting high for about three hours, we decided to actually get uh, this mask. And, and let me tell you something, finding a mask, a respirator right now in COVID season, it's not hard. Thankfully, I've got a good friend, Ryan, who's part of my family. Uh, he is a contractor and he brought this over, so I won't die from uh, fumes and inhalation now. I can't say the same for Anthony over there, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, the important part is just to protect myself. lately just kind of fixing up cages, putting in plants, making them look a little more natural. Today we're going to tackle Sunfire's cage. I don't know if you guys have seen her too much on the vlog. Uh, she may be small, but she's very fast, so this should be pretty fun getting her out. And got to get her out first before I can put the plants in. <laughs> and stuff makes it you know look so much more natural to me uh, you know it was all just brown in there before so the green makes stuff pop a little bit more she's gonna pop a lot more too having that green the contraster my favorite thing about her too is she like actually loves to climb on the branches in here and she'll sit up on the branches like a like a green tree python it's crazy so so the ceiling is all painted now, which is great. Now we're gonna just tape off the floor and we're gonna prime the walls and then ultimately do the final coat of wall. Uh, here, we gotta prime the other side here and then uh, I think we're good for the finished coat tomorrow. Start rocking the wall potentially tomorrow. So uh, things are moving along, doing good. Guys, I wanted to just kind of shout out again. We just sat down and did uh, Brian's Corner over on Patreon. Uh, we're gonna do that every week. It's a little behind the scenes where I do a, you know, kind of a Q and A type of thing where I answer a question, a poll or whatever, and talk a little bit behind the scenes. Again, Patreon, link will be in the description. We're trying to add a, lot, a ton more content uh, and value to the Patreon. If you want kind of a little bit more of an intimate thing uh, behind the scenes, questions, all kinds of different stuff like that. So uh, we're starting to enjoy it. We have Anthony helping us with Patreon. So now we're doing content continuously. So regardless, uh, if you're interested in supporting us on Patreon, we do appreciate it. Link will be in the description. I've had the best success with assist feeding with ball pythons and the only reason for that is is that ball python seems to be pretty cooperative when it comes to actually putting a fuzzy in their mouth and having them eat it on their own. Many other snakes, boa constrictors in particular, have had much harder time assist feeding because they just spit it out, spit it out, spit it out and there's no way that I can get them to actually go down. Now some will and I think assist feeding can happen with all snakes. Dude. 
dude. Get like a perfect I'm getting gray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you're gray. <laughs> oh my god, you really do. So this is it, and this is the uh, the prime coat here. This room's actually going to stay white, so we got to go back and do a finished white coat in here, so it'll be really nice and aesthetic and beautiful, cosmetic looking. This room uh, is good with the ceiling. We've got the wall on this side prime because that's going to be a brown wall. Then the rest of these walls are going to be rocked out that hopefully we can start even tomorrow maybe. So I've got a little trim work to do left today and then that's it. And then tomorrow we'll get to it and hopefully get the final coat on this puppy here. Get the rocks up, get carpet in and uh, start to get this place wrapped up here in the next, uh, I don't know, four or five days. So I'm sitting here uh, on my massage table in my snake massage room and we talked about how we were probably going to transform this, uh, you know, in to a sloth room that's the idea and uh, of course we already have this wall rocked out here we gotta you know seam it up and stuff like that but the idea would is to rock the rest of stuff obviously we move these cages out of here get that redone and stuff like that which is fine rock out the rest of the walls and again because a sloth loves to climb obviously we would do like branches all along the top here and the idea would be is that you would literally be able to you know come from out here walk in the door and this entire room would be an exhibit that you could walk in to you know branches over here we know they do like hide spots and warm spots so we probably do like a hide and a warm spot over there but they're very easily enticed with food so even if they were kind of sleeping and hanging out over there or I should say well I don't think I'm gonna get two so if it was sleeping although I wouldn't might get two I don't know uh, we could entice it out and the sloth could be like right here so you could literally walk in and be literally right with the sloth right I mean and I'm thinking again universal rocks where we have you know just all these trees and branches maybe we even have a tree tree right here that comes over so it looks like you're walking into a little rainforest exhibit rocked walls just really beautiful and then of course have that unbelievable sloth just hanging out here that people could interact with it's uh ever since you guys suggested that idea it's been on my mind i cannot wait to transform this room you know but first of course you know there's a lot of props you have to go to you can't just buy a sloth anywhere i want a captive born one you want one that's about six months old so that it's weaned off but not too young so it can still bond with people and stuff like that because I want this to be really tame you know I don't want this to be a wild sloth that's going to bite people I want it to be really habituated to where I can handle it people could handle it stuff like that without you know over stressing of course but I'm really excited about the transformation of this room again it's going to take a lot of work it's going to take the energy of the uh, vision and i I've been doing research on how to care for sloths for quite a while, but I'm actually going to even visit a couple friends of mine that work with sloths and really pick their brain before we actually do the room so I have it dialed in perfectly, you know, humidity, temperature, everything for the animal. So it's going to be really cool to be able to walk in here and have an amazing sloth experience. I mean, I am so excited about this one. <laughs> Definitely a lot of work down in the podcast room. I, uh, I've got paint all in my hair. Cool to get the sloth stuff going. And Lori seems to be on board. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments if you guys enjoyed this video. Here's another video I think that you would love to check out. So go ahead, do me a favor, click on that one. It helps me out. Up in this corner, right over here you can subscribe to my podcast channel the rooms that we're working on called checking in on this side subscribe to this vlog channel please turn your post notifications on have an absolutely wonderful day remember be kind to someone and i promise i'll see you tomorrow